The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning. It's Fed Day. We get a Fed decision, 2 p.m. Eastern time. It's earnings day as well. Volatility in the S&Ps right now. Zooming things in, jumping to an even five-minute chart. You see the acceleration just in the last five minutes, peaking above yesterday's opening high. The S&Ps peaking as high as 29.18. Currently trading 29.10 on that number. We were as low as about 28.80 as of just 8 a.m. So you're talking about a solid 40 S&P points. Check out that acceleration in the last hour. We'll see what happens. Jumping back to the other charts. We'll start things off with the commodities. How about crude oil climbing from yesterday? Uh, excuse me, that's last night. Yes, almost. Uh... Nope, this is going to be yesterday. Yes, early yesterday morning, we hit a price of $10.62. We've been rising since that level, almost $4. Crude finding a bid yet again, $14.54. Gold contract at $17.21. We got the NASDAQ 100 catching a bid with the rest of the market. You can see, though, the NASDAQ 100, not above where we were early yesterday morning. When you compare that with the S&Ps, we just eclipsed that level, which was about 29.13. And looking at the Dow, we rose above that level as well, 24,431. So the NASDAQ lagging behind a bit. I mean, that level in the NASDAQ, you're talking about a solid 80 points almost above where we're at right now in the NASDAQ 100. There's your Dow 30. 24,444 and the S&Ps as we covered 2913. In terms of what else we have happening going on in the market, jumping over to some of the equities with moves, and I'm just pulling up the story as we get into it. But how about Google last night on their numbers? G-O-O-G, -O -O -G, Alphabet, check out that acceleration. So the slowdown, we'll get into the numbers later in the show, but the slowdown, not as much as the market feared in terms of their advertising and so forth. So you had the stock closing at about 12.33, and we're $108 above that price level right now with an hour to go, 13.42 in the price of Google. Some of the other FANG stocks as we jump around before we get into earnings this morning coming up. Microsoft shares up a bit, 173.46. Amazon shares up to about 23.55, it looks like. Apple shares up to 282.70 right now. Jumping back to other equities with earnings this morning, how about Boeing posting a quarterly loss of 641 million, burns through $4.3 billion in cash. So Boeing, of course, dealing with woes on two fronts in terms of their own uh, misdeeds with the 737 MAX and then, of course, the complete shutdown of air travel. First quarter loss, 641 million, burned through 4.3 billion. EPS, a loss of $1.70. Revenue, still almost $17 billion for 90 days, 16.91 billion. Um, Boeing had about 160,000 employees at the end of the last year. Before the market opened today, the company said it's planning to reduce production of some aircraft, including the 787 Dreamliner, to cut payroll by about 10% through voluntary measures, involuntary layoffs as necessary and there is some action on the u.s first quarter gdp so gross domestic product expected to contract 3.5 percent in the first quarter actually shrinking 4.8 percent you think jerome powell is going to get any questions about the gdp and about the economy coming up later today there's your s p and there's your volatility around that number we've given up 15 points now since that spike high that we had in about the last 15 minutes what else we have happening? GE says their first quarter revenue declined 8%, expects this quarter to be worse because of the pandemic. Total revenue, $20.52 billion, represents a year-over-year -year decline of 8%. Adjusted per share basis, company earned $0.05. Cents. The second quarter will be the first full quarter with pressure from COVID-19, and GE expects its financial results will decline sequentially. GE, on that front, 
There's your action on that news from $7 almost to 647. You see the earnings and you see the conference call beginning just at about 8 a.m. Looks to be hanging out right at about $6.47 right now, down almost 40 pennies from where we were yesterday. GE, longer term time frame on GE. I mean, ouch. Even, you know, we were at 1339 before this pain began. We, we dipped under six and we're just hanging right at these lows. Similar action to where we were in this market in December of 2018. Yum Brand, Taco Bell's owners, same store sales dropped 7% in the first three months of the year. Yum reported first quarter adjusted earnings per share, 64 cents, revenue, 1.26 billion. They own KFC, they own Taco Bell. The KFC owners said its overall same store sales shrank 7% during the first three months of the year. So maybe this is our volatility. Why not jump into it? Because that was quite a little spike. And, uh, was it Chilead? We'll get into that, I guess. But back to Yum Brands. Earnings per share, 64 cents. Revenue, 1.26 billion. First quarter net income, 83 million, down from 262 million a year earlier. The company's minority stake in Grubhub trimmed earnings per share by six cents, excluding refranchising gains. Cost of acquiring Habit Burger Grill and other items, Yum earned 64 cents per share. Net sales rising 1%. Wall Street was looking for 65 cents on revenue of 1.2. What are they? Are they Yum? I think they might be Yum Brands. Let's zoom it in because they're trading a little bit lower this morning. There's your volatility right now. Your bid ask 87.50 by 88.50 closed at 88.27 on Yum. Other stocks out there, ADP, the payroll processing company, came in three cents a share ahead of estimates with quarterly earnings on $1.92 per share. Revenue beat forecast as well. However, the company lowered its earnings and revenue outlook for the year. Payroll company, always a good indication of the economy, right? ADP closed yesterday at 143.01. Uh, you have an extremely wide bid ask, so no real action on that, but last print at 142.14. Garmin, the maker of the GPS devices, beat estimates by seven cents a share, quarterly profit of 91 cents a share, revenue above projection as well. The company said it had strong momentum during the quarter ahead of the coronavirus outbreak, but it is withdrawing 2020 guidance. Should be no surprise there. Um, Garmin, what's everyone need their GPS for? Well, they're staying at home, but I guess they do. Uh, up a bit, bid ask 85.30 by 86.25. You're trading at about 83.40 right now. Jumping around to other action in the market before we get back to different equities. The VIX this morning trading a bit lower as the market is 37 points higher in the S&Ps. The VIX trading at 32.13. The low yesterday on the open, 30.54. As we mentioned, you draw things back to the rise and the fall. The VIX, I mean, we're at levels that we saw that was late February here, that kind of range on the first acceleration down in the market. You had a low around February 28th in the market. That's when the VIX had spiked. You thought order was restored. Pretty low, pretty remarkable that we made it actually back down below 25 in the VIX. After all of this had started, like, uh, like we had seen a max pain situation already. And then from 25 on March 3rd, up to 85 on March 18th, but it's April 29th, and we're back at 32. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be going over other earnings we have on action for Wednesday with Sven Day as well. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 38 right now. The Dow positive by 340. You got NASDAQ positive by 123. Oil contract up $2.09 at 1443. Oil looks to have somewhat found a bid since the collapse early, early yesterday morning. Gold trading at 1720 right now. Silver up 17 pennies at 1550. Jumping back to equities. Uh, the first quarter GDP numbers, so we talked about them, GDP shrinking almost 5%. The 3.5% decline was what was expected. Economists were looking for 3.5. This marked the first negative GDP reading since the 1.1% decline in the first quarter of 2014 and the lowest level since the 8.4% plunge in Q4 of 2008 during the worst of the financial crisis. Most economists see the U.S. in recession already, even though the technical definition is generally two consecutive quarters of negative growth. The fourth quarter of 2019, we saw a rise of 2.1%. Yeah, a lot, a lot different about this time in terms of you know, the, the technical definition, two consecutive quarters. But when you have weekly jobless claims coming in at 6 million and the previous record being somewhere around 600,000, I imagine that uh, you don't need to wait almost six months in terms of two consecutive quarters to see that 20 plus million people unemployed, that's going to have an effect for sure. Google numbers. So we talked about their stock rising, getting into the actual numbers that they put up. 987 per share, revenue 41.16 billion, cloud revenue 2.78, YouTube advertising revenue 4.04 billion, and traffic acquisition cost 7.45. So analysts survey, surveyed had expected 1033 in adjusted earnings per share with 40.29 billion in revenue, right? So they came in at 987. The market was looking for 1033. So they miss on the earnings number, but they were only looking for 40.29 billion in revenue and they took in 41 
6.16. That is quite uh, a number to beat by almost a billion dollars during a pandemic. Analysts were looking for a cost of 7.51 billion in traffic acquisition. They came in under that number. However, comparing Alphabet's actual results with estimates isn't straightforward given the difficulty of predicting the impact of the coronavirus. Yeah, I would expect so. Um, YouTube ad revenue grew 33% from last year. However, she noted the brand advertising saw a steep drop off in March, while other forms of advertising did not. So Google has brand advertising, and then they have advertising that is determined in terms of actual marketing of specific call to action events, right? Like the, um, transitioning from a call to action versus just something like Pepsi Cola advertising their brand for brand awareness. You saw the brand awareness really pull back, <clears throat> but you saw people capitalizing maybe on the amount of interactions online. And when it came to call to actions, maybe it's home exercise equipment is advertising with a call to action, right? They're not advertising with brand awareness. They're advertising for you to buy a unit right now. Maybe it's a uh, some type of uh, food item, a weekly sign up for food delivery, whether it's uh, new pajamas that you're spending at home, comfy clothes, jeans, shirts, uh, office equipment, desks, lamps, um, home repairs, all of that stuff. Nonetheless, Google's total advertising revenue rose to 33.76 billion from 30.59 billion the prior year. There's your total ad revenue, Q1 2020, 33.8. You see the huge run. I imagine this having to do maybe with holiday sales. You get that spike every fourth quarter, right? There's your spike here, here, and here. Annual ad revenue growth declining in terms of the acceleration to positive territory, but still, that's above 10%, folks, on billions and billions of dollars. Uh, so checking back on the Google shares, some great numbers there for revenue and really surprising the market. The expected move on Google yesterday, about $62, I believe, representing, um, you're talking about about a 5% move on Google was priced into that for options. The Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform gives you that one day expected move. It was about $62 when we talked to Kevin Hanks yesterday at 10 a.m. in the morning. But guess what? How about blowing right past that to an even hundred at 13.33, almost a 10% move. Uh, $123 would be 10%. So you're looking at about 8% move on Google shares this morning ahead of the open. Other action, Hasbro. They expect the virus to hit second quarter earnings, but will be prepared for holiday season. Hasbro reported first quarter earnings Wednesday, telling investors that it has sold a financial footing, to, excuse me, Telling investors that it has a solid financial footing during the coronavirus pandemic, the toy maker's cutting costs as it prepares to meet the seasonal demand that comes in the second half of the year. Demand for family gains has spiked. There's one thing, right? You know, during the quarter and into April, everyone having their game night. You can almost have game night any night, right? Uh, Hasbro. Uh, check out that drop off from almost $79 yesterday. You had a little bit of a steep sell off to end the day. So you ended actually at 77.86, but we were above 80 at the beginning of yesterday. And you're going to open somewhere between 74 and 75. Bid ask 74 by 75 right now for Hasbro. Other news items this morning, weekly mortgage applications to buy a home make a strong recovery as rates hit a new record low. The average contract interest rate for 30-year fixed rate mortgages decreased to 3.43% from 3.45 last week. That boosted mortgage demand from home buyers by 12% signaling a potential turn in buyer confidence. Maybe one thing people have time to do is to check out some houses online while they're at home. If they were gonna be a potential buyer, if they have money available, um, that market still open, folks. Open for business with mortgage rates at that low, low level. And maybe this is um, an opportunity for some. Mortgage applications to buy a home rose last week, but refinance demand fell, causing total application volume to decline by 3.3% for the week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association Seasonally Adjusted Index. Um, yeah, so mortgage demand for home buyers jumped 12%. Volume it was still 20% lower than the same week one year ago, real estate firms and listing websites have been reporting more buyer demand anecdotally over the past two weeks, and some home builders say they are also seeing buyers come back. Wasn't it DHI that just reported their earnings? Yeah, they did. Check out that run. Um, 
DHI last week was at about 39. You're trading at 47, those home builders with interest rates where they are, seem to be doing just fine. Other stocks making moves this morning, where were we? So GE, we talked about, but they're gonna see the first quarter revenue decline 8%. They expect the quarter to be the worst because of the pandemic, and they're gonna be laying off. The real key here that I wanna emphasize again, about 10% of their workforce, I believe, as we get down. So the company announced earlier this month it was withdrawing its 2020 forecast. The company also said its cash and cash equivalent holdings topped more than 47 billion. That is quite a number, along with a revolving debt facility of 15 billion to ride out the virus-induced downturn. Now I believe it was about four billion dollars that they burned through. I'm not finding it. But nonetheless, GE will jump over as we wrap up this segment. From $7, getting a little bit of a pop, though. That's why they came back on my radar even this morning. You have the conference call beginning at 8 o'clock, and whatever's going on in that conference call, it seems to be going pretty well as you're getting a little bit of a bid in GE up to 661. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back from the program. And don't forget, Tom O'Brien, a Timing the Trade webinar all day tomorrow, $395. You get his book, his newsletter. Check it out on the front page at TFNN.com. That starts tomorrow at 9 a.m. Go sign up and get ready for it. Folks. I'm we'll be right back. you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary extraordinary set of tools, as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. As I mentioned on the front page of TFNN, Tom O'Brien, a Timing the Trade All Day webinar. Check it out. It's going to start 24 hours and five minutes from right now. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., you can sign up today. You'll gain access to Market Insights. You'll get a physical copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. That will be mailed to you, and you'll be in there tomorrow from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m., two three-hour segments. As you'll be in there, 9 to noon, a lunch break, and then 1 to 4 Quality volume, ABCs, Fibonacci, swing points, cause and effect, confluence, the whole deal in there for six hours with Tom. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com before it begins tomorrow. Sign up now. Other stocks out there with action, you had Starbucks earnings last night. Shares falling after the coffee chain warns U.S. cafe closures to deal hefty blow to earnings. Starbucks said Tuesday... Fiscal second quarter, global same store sales fell 10%. That is quite a number, folks, when you talk about the business they're doing. But check out the little bit of a rebound recently in the last about half hour. You're back up to 78.89. We had Ford earnings. I'm just going to fly through it here. Down a bit to 524 from 538. Spotify with good numbers as they're gaining subscribers in the paying and non-paying portion from 140 up to about 153 this morning. And we get two giants after the bell tonight. Tesla reports after the bell as we inch towards almost $800 and Microsoft after the bell as well. Microsoft shares from 169.81 yesterday up to 173.74. You see a little bit of volatility. Maybe that had to do with Google crushing it out of the park last night. If Google's doing well, maybe the cloud and the whole business. And while we finish it up, let's jump back to that S&Ps because we're catching quite a little bit here. As I mentioned, from 8 a.m., from 28 81. We're now approaching the highs we made during the 830 bar of 2918. S&Ps up 1.7%. We get the NASDAQ up 1.7% as well. The Dow up 433 points, 1.8%. And the Russell continuing the run up 2.6%. Check out that charge higher in the Russell. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pezzavento live at 9. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Live programming all Wednesday. It's Fed Day, 2 p.m. announcement. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.